So I have a FPGA development board set up and a laptop using Altera Signal Tap 2. Cool, but how did we get here? Beginning around 2018, I started collecting Atari 2600 cartridges, a few games here, for instance, and that motivated me to make my own Atari 2600 clone. And in that case, I was able to find the original chips for the Atari 2600. In addition to Atari 2600, I also started collecting Intellivision cartridges. And the Intellivision holds a very special place in my heart because it was my very own first console. Got it around 1983 or 1984. Wow, that's a long time ago. Unlike the case with the Atari 2600 clone, once I started looking for the components of the Intellivision, I was out of luck. So we're forced to use a different approach. Rather than source the individual components that make up the Intellivision, I decided to do an FPGA core of the Intellivision. And the first thing that I'll be working on is to do a FPGA core of the processor itself that was used in, in the Intellivision, the CP1610. And that's the subject of this video. The CP1610 was made by a company that's no longer around named General Instrument. The processors that General Instrument usually made um, were used uh, for industrial applications typically. But it's worth noting in the case of the CP1610, 3 million of those things were sold as part of the uh, Intellivision. Now there's some interesting trivia as far as General Instrument goes. First of all, between 1990 and 1993, the CEO of the company was Donald Rumsfeld. Yeah, that Donald Rumsfeld, the former Secretary of Defense during the George W. Bush years. And also the division responsible for producing the CP1610 was eventually spun into its own company, and that company is still around today and is called Microchip Technology and they're famous as the creators of the PIC microcontroller. So in terms of uh, research, on the internet, I was able to find some old data sheets. Like this is the general instrument data sheet for the CP1610 right here. I also use some websites for my research. One good one is wiki.intellivision.us. And I learned a lot about the processor there. For instance, the flags. The eight registers and how they work. The addressing modes, implied, register, direct, immediate, indirect, and stack. And then most importantly, the instruction set. That was kind of my Bible right here. Another good website was spatulacity.org. So after some research, I started to implement the design in VHDL. And the top level for this is called CP1610 Core. Not gonna go into gory detail, but just sort of uh, show some of the main points. Probably the most important part is the state machine. And this is the line here that declares the different states. So for instance, um, the prefix op uh, stands for the states associated with fetching the op code. Um, the im prefix are for the states um, involved in immediate mode and also indirect mode. And then dir are the states for direct addressing. And then there's also states associated with the interrupt, INT prefix, jump, and branch, also reset. The actual code for the state machine is mostly embedded inside this one big case statement. It's pretty extensive.
Now there's also um, sub blocks for doing uh, in, like the opcode decode, um, ALU, and then to hold the registers. But I think it goes beyond the scope of this video to dig into each of those. And that brings us to our existing setup today. Uh, the development board over here, in addition to having the CP1610 processor, it also contains a top level design that includes the main program ROM, executive ROM, and 256 bytes of RAM. You'll notice that there's two buttons over here. The one on the right I use um, to issue a reset. The one on the left I use to issue an interrupt. Okay, um, before we proceed with the demonstration, I'm just gonna show you the code that we're gonna run. It's a really simple program. Uh, so the main part of it, main part of the program starts at address 4000. The first thing that happens is interrupts enabled. Then R0 is initialized to five. Then we start a loop where we decrement R0. Branch not equal to loop. What basically happens here is it compares R0 with zero. Um, if it's not zero, not equal to zero, it'll keep jumping back up to loop. And then finally, when it exits this loop, it jumps back to main, which reinitializes the five. So this code will endlessly count from five down to zero and then repeat. We also have an interrupt service routine. That's at address 5,000. In that one, we simply increment by four and then we do uh, an indirect move um, using R6 back into R7. R6 is associated with the stack pointer and R7 is the program counter. So for those of you that don't know, um, SignalTap2 basically implements an embedded logic analyzer into the FPGA. So I'm just going to configure the design get it ready for acquisition. And now I'm going to press the reset button. Okay, so I acquired some data now. So essentially the trigger is over here. So initially what we see here, um, this beginning over here at 1000, that's the address. 1000, 1001, 1002, that's the executive ROM jumping to the main program, which you guys may recall was address 4000. At 4002, we're loading register zero with the five. And then you'll see we're decrementing. You'll recall that there's some kind of branching thing. So after 4005, we go to 4003. We decrement again. We went from four to three. Then two. One. Zero. And at this stage, we should be jumping back. to the top of the program, um, which is setting register zero to five and so on. This time we're gonna set up for an interrupt. So now I'm gonna press the button for interrupt. Okay, we've captured the data. Okay, so, so the trigger is over here. At this spot, it's uh, running the main program, in this case at address 4005. Then in response to the interrupt, it goes to the executive ROM, address 1004. And then the next two addresses, like 1004, the 1005, 1006, 
causes um, the program to jump to 5,000. 5,000 is where the interrupt service routine was. And you recall that the that the interrupt service routine was pretty simple. It's supposed to increment register R4. So this is register R4 here. Initially, it was one. Um, now it becomes two. So yeah, it's recovered fully because 4,003, 4,004, 4,005, back to 4,003. Yeah, so, uh, so that's it. I think I'm going to raid this snap circuit set in order to uh, rig up uh, another cool demonstration. I think I'm liking this NPN transistor and this speaker. All right, so I rigged up a audio circuit to this thing. And now we'll configure the design. Okay, maybe I oversold this when I said this was going to be a cool demonstration. Um, sounds like 1983 in a terrible way. But anyway, that's where I am now. Um, please check back uh, sometime in the future when I finish the Intellivision Core, the full Intellivision Core. Until next time.